السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فالحكم لله العلي الكبير وقال تعالى إن الحكم إلا لله وقال تعالى وله الحكم وإليه ترجعون وقال تعالى والله يحكم لا معقب لحكمه وقال تعالى أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Uh, so we'll continue with the uh, the beautiful names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we have been doing for many many months now. The last English workshop I skipped this because uh, uh, I wanted to. Uh, talk about the lessons that we learn from uh, the Eid al-Adha, the Eid of Sacrifice. Inshallah, I'm coming back to the beautiful names of Allah Ta'ala that we are doing in this English version of our character building workshops. And I've kept on repeating that, kept on saying that, that when we get to know Allah, when we know Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the way that we should know Him through His beautiful attributes, His sifat, then we become a very different people and we become a very different human being. Uh, so that's why it's very important to know as Muslims as to who is Allah and we only get to know Allah through His Sifat. And that is what we are ordered by the Prophet ﷺ to reflect on as well on His Sifat and not His Zat, on His attributes and not on His being. The attributes, the two attributes that I've chosen for today uh, are Al-Hakam and Al-Adl. Al-Hakam and Al-Adl. Uh, they are different, but they can be related as well. Al-Hakam is the one who judges, the judge, or the one who rules, is also Al-Hakam. Hakim is the ruler, and Hakam generally is a judge, a referee, you know, in a game, there is a there is a referee who is al hakam. Um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, if a husband and a wife have a conf conflict, say so, try to resolve that. Then Allah Taala says, bring hakam hakam min ahlihi wa hakam min ahliha. That you bring uh, a judge or a one uh, who re can reconcile from the family of the husband and the one a judge or the one who can reconcile from the family of the wife. So the one who judges, the one who makes decisions, or one who gives rulings, or the one who rules, they're all Al-Hakam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Hakam. He's the one who rules, he's the one who gives judgments, he's the one who decides, he's the one who give, uh, who give all the rulings. And his rulings are such that there is nobody who can challenge his rule, who can change his rule, who can object to his rule, who can criticize to his rule, he is such a ruler and he is such a judge that the judgment that he makes that nobody can challenge that, challenge that judgment and that is why I said that the next, the other attribute of Al-Adl is also related to the judgment part of it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he judges, he judges, judges with justice, with absolute justice. So, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Hakam. And by the way, I mean, people can, uh, of course, uh, have different sorts of uh, kunyat. Like, for example, if my son's name is Abdullah, then I'm Abu Abdullah. Uh, Lakin, and people can, people do have other kunyat, not necessarily based on their children, but some people give them some titles like Abu Fulan, Abu Fulan, and uh, Abu not necessarily mean uh, the father, but Abu can also be in the mean of Zu, yani the one who who owns this or who has this 
attribute. So once Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was some Sahabi who came, Sayyidina Hani bin Yazid radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his tribe and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got to know that his kunyat is Abu ha Abul Hakam. His name kunyat is Abul Hakam. So he said, what is this? Why are you called Abul Hakam? Because nobody names a child Hakam. How are you called Abul Hakam? He says, you know, I'm I'm the I'm a judge in my tribe. Yani people always come to me for judgments and they like my judgment so much that they have started calling me Abul Hakam. First Prophet Sallallahu praised him. He said, Very good that you give good judgments amongst people. Very good. But do you have children? He said, Yes, I have three. He said, Who are those? He said, Shurai, Abdullah, and uh, Muslim. So he said, Who is the eldest? He said, Shurai. He said, You are Abu Shurai. Just change that. I mean, don't call yourself Abu Hakam. Yani, because Abu, uh, the one with, with, with that absolute Hakam or, or Hukam is Allah. That's it. Nobody can be that Al Hakam. So how, how are you calling yourself Abu Hakam? That's absolutely not right. So um, so anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the judge and he is the one who rules and he is the one as I said that who rules the in the best of the ways and who gives the rulings in the in the absolute way and there is nobody nobody should object to his rules rulings and because his rulings are full of wisdom and inshallah we'll talk about sometime we'll talk about Al Hakim. You know, he's also the most wise, right? And that's also related. It's the same root, Hakaf, Mim, Hakam, Hakim, Hakim, right? So uh, he's also Hakim, right? He His rulings are most, the most wise as well. There's, we may not understand them, maybe, because of our lack of intellect, because we cannot understand things properly. But... His, his rulings are the most wise. Sometimes we do understand the wisdom behind it. Sometimes we do not understand the wisdom behind it. But whatever he decides is the best for people. Is the best for people. Right? Um, there's a, it's very unfortunate that people with weak Iman, they start criticizing on certain things. They start asking questions about certain things. But the reason they are asking about certain things is because they do not know the overall picture. Right. They don't know the end-to-end -end picture. Uh, many a times our young kids, they also criticize some of our um, uh, decisions that we make. Right, And we know why we're making decisions. We know. Right? Because we have, we, have been, we, have ex we have experience of a certain thing for the last 30 years, 40 years. And we know that what are the consequence, consequences of such a thing and we do we make certain decisions. But a child who is like a 10 year old, an 8 year old, he starts saying, why Baba? Why do you do that? Why do you say so? Right? He may ask a question because he is not understanding why am I making that decision. But I know based on my experience and this is in a very, very inf with, with a very finite experience and a time frame. Right and with with a very finite knowledge as well, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who has infinite knowledge, right? For him, there is no, there is no time frame. There is no past, future, or present. Right? It, 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 time is a very relative thing, and time is also a makhluk, and there is no time for Allah. Right? This question that since when Allah has been there? That's a wrong question because time is makhluk. So how can a khalik fit into makhluk? A khalik cannot fit into makhluk. The creator cannot be in the creation. Right? So, time is also a creation. So, the question is that since when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been there, it's a wrong question because time is a creation. And a creator cannot be in the creation. So, it's a wrong question. It's not the right question. It's an, it's an invalid question. So, so there is no past for Allah. There is no present for Allah, there is no future for Allah, it's all one and the same thing. But because we live in time, we live within these four Ds, we live in, you know, the space, in, 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 in a three-dimensional plus a fourth or a fifth dimension, you can say. We live in a space and we live in time. There is space and time for all of us. So, 
because we are in, we are covered in those five Ds, in the five domains, so we cannot understand beyond these five Ds. Our, our akal only works according to these five dimensions. Our akal kaami in five dimensions ke andar karti hai. You know, we have a, you know, we have a depth, we have a height, we have a width, we have space and we have time. We cannot understand what's beyond this. That's why the mushrikeen of Makkah could not understand how come Prophet sallallahu went to the journey of Isra and Mi'raj within a night because they were thinking in, in the time frame and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him outside the time, the frame of time from, right, Allah ta'ala took him out of that so when you go out of the frame, frame of time or the dimension of time then there is no time then, you know, things can happen in an instant as we, and it's also very relative but it's instant that's why we talk we, we talk like this because we, we, we live in that we live in those five Ds right so there is no pre past no future no present for Allah right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best as to what is good for people what is good for his, all his makhluk and that's he gives judgment according to that he rules according to that and whatever he rules and whatever he does, that is the best for all his makhluk. And plus, as I said, he also is a, he is also just. He also is 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 al adl. He is the just. So his hukam and his adl they come together. And by the way, there is an all of these attributes. Actually, we have to know Allah by by knowing all of his attributes. One attribute or many attributes that we did that were related to the mercy of Allah. He's Ar Rahim, He's Al Ghaffar, He's Ar Rahman, right? There are certain rulings that He gives according to His Rahma, and there are certain rulings that He gives according to His Adil. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us anything, right, that is His Rahma, that is His mercy, that is Him being Ar Rahim. Not according to that because he is Al-Adl. Right. Say for example, somebody says, you know, I should, I got it because I, I prayed 20 rakahs last night. Huh? If somebody says that I got that thing because I prayed 20 rakahs last night, because I gave 5,000 dirhams in charity last, last week, that's why I got this and that. Well, those 20 rakahs, if you really reflect on that, did you not think about anything other than Allah in those 20 rakahs? Is there anybody who can claim that? And the answer might be no. Right? Such a such thought popped up and a flaw thought popped up and a flaw thought pop, popped up and that's why when we pray at the end of the prayer, what do we say? Allahu Akbar, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. And Allah is the greatest and I am doing ibadat of Allah and I am such a weak, small, little, mini, miniature makhluk, right? Not even a dot on, 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 on our solar system, even forget about the galaxy and the whole universe. I'm not even a dot, right? I am doing the ibadat of the Khalik of the, all the universes, Rabbul Alameen. And look at me that I'm thinking about anybody else other than Allah. Astaghfirullah. What is what are my those two rakas? What are those twenty rakas? When I gave in charity, did I have hundred percent ikhlas, sincerity? So much so that my right hand gave and my left hand didn't even know that my what did my right hand get, right hand give? Did I have that much ikhlas? Maybe, maybe not. Let's assume I did. Alright, who gave you that? Who gave you that? One of a very, very close uh, family, they, they lost uh, their one-month-old baby last week. Inna lillahi wa inna rajun. Of course, very, very traumatizing, very difficult to take it. They were twins and they lost one of those. SubhanAllah. Lekin, this, this kalima, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun, gives us patience. What does it mean? Who gave the baby? Allah. He took him back. As he decided. He, want, he, he decided that he takes, him, takes the baby back. He took the baby back. He gave it. He gave 
her to them, he took her back. So, inna lillahi, we are from Allah, wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and we are going to go back to Allah. Right? Likewise, the wealth, Allah Ta'ala said, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They spent from what I have given them. They spent from what I have given to them. Ideally, if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us, for example, 100,000 dirhams, assume, right? Uh, Allah Ta'ala says, spend. I say, Ya Allah, here is this 100,000. But look at us. We give like 100 there and 1,000 there and a 500 there and we think, oh my God, I'm such a generous man that I've given 500 out of 100,000. Subhanallah. What should be our response? Astaghfirullah. 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 I'm so stingy. Such a bakhil insan. Right? Allah Ta'ala is giving me thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And I give like a thousand or two or five hundred here and there and I feel that I'm such a generous man. Right? When Allah Ta'ala is saying, you spend and I'll give you more. Maybe Allah keh rahe, tum do me aur dunga. Here be our heart is so stingy that we, are, we cannot even take out, you know, more. Right? Astaghfirullah. So if Allah Ta'ala had to do justice, we, would, we, we cannot get anything out of the actions, the good actions that we are doing. That is not his adal. That is not his adal. That is his rahma. That is him being rahim. This is him being ghaffar. This is him being rahman. This is him being ghafoor. Right? That he forgives. Koi baat ne. I know. Khuliqa al insanu da'ifa. Insan has been created weak. You know, there's shuh in him. There is that, that stinginess in him. He loves wealth, right? So if he's not spending a lot, like he's not giving the, all the hundred thousand back, Allah Taala says, "I know, uh, he is ajul, he is waif, uh, he is zaloom." So Allah Taala forgives. So that's his rahmah, that if, if we get anything good out of the good action that we have done, that's not adil. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to punish somebody, right, that's his adil. He's being just here. He's being just here. So if anybody goes to Jahannam, Auzu Billah, may Allah protect all of us. That's the adil of Allah. And if anybody goes to Jannah, that is the rahmat of Allah. That's exactly what Prophet ﷺ said. He said that nobody will go to Jannah except the mercy of Allah. Sahaba so asked, what about you, Ya Rasulullah? He said, even me. Subhanallah. A prophet of Allah, not just a prophet. He is Sayyidul Anbiya. He is Imam al Mursaleen. He is saying, even I will go to Jannah with his mercy. What about me and you? Amari kya Right? So, Allah Ta'ala rules, He judges in the best of the ways. Nobody can challenge His rules and in any way they are the best. And He's the best judge and He's the best ruler. And whatever He decides is the best for His makhluk. And He's, he's al-adal as well, he's, he's just as well, but honestly speaking, you know, we, we should beg Allah, Ya Allah, not your justice. Ya Allah, your Rahmah. Your Rahmat, Ya Allah, your Rahmat. So, I need justice. Right? SubhanAllah, as for, for makhlukat, seeker, you can say, I want justice because people have oppressed me. I want that I be judged with justice and I'll be given my right. Seeker, but never claim it from Allah. Never claim it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a riwayat that there is a man who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for like 300, 400, 400 years. I can't remember exactly. 500 years. He worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 500 years. People used to have long lives. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu time. 
he just worshiped he just preached for 950 years sare 900 saal to unne daawat di hai quran kehta hai it's in the quran so people just have long 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 life so there was a one very righteous man worshiped allah for 500 years so the riwayat is that he will be presented to allah on the day of judgment and allah taala will say enter him into jannah with my mercy you will say ya allah i worship you for 500 years right I never disobeyed you, Ya Allah. I never disobeyed you, right? I I remain in sajda and in ruku and in qiyam. I'm just explaining it. It's not the words of these are not the words of hadith. They can. I ex, I worshipped you so long, and you are saying enter me to channa through my mercy. Ya Allah, I need justice. What the? So insan ho raha na Ya Allah. Insaf kar dije. Allah Taala. will decide okay if he wants justice let's do let's do justice all the blessings that he got in dunya let's see that what did he give them give the due rights of all the blessings that he got let's start with the blessing of the eye so it will be decided that or will be told that the blessing of the eye it demanded 500 years of worship all right ye to aankhe to ho gayi let's put eyes now next the tongue for example the ears the other body parts the brains right where is the worship for that it's he will say ya allah with your mercy ya <laughs> allah with your mercy ya allah with your mercy maaf karte forgive me for that i was so ignorant and that's so true so if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does adal to somebody nobody can be saved there's a punjabi ka ek sher hai yaad aa raha hai ke ke adal kare dil darze jaan darze jaawan uchhiyan shana wale ते रहम करे ते बख्शे जावन मेरे जे मेरे जे भी मेरे भी जय मुँह खा लें समथिंग लाइक दैट कि इफ यू डू जस्टिस या अल्लाह देन इवन द पीपल विद हाई स्टैटस विल बी शेकिंग पर इफ यू डू डू इफ यू डू रहमत इफ यू शो मर्सी या अल्लाह देन इवन विद पीपल विद ब्लैक फेसेस लाइक माय सेल्फ विल बी विल बी फॉर गिवन इनशा so he, he is al hakam and he is al adl but then there are other things that ul- that ulama have said also about al adl so one is that he, he 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 does justice to people right although we do not need justice in the final judgment but there are many things where allah subhanahu wa taala does do justice Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala ignores people's shortcomings and Allah Taala just looks at small little deeds that people do and Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala does grant them Allah Taala says who will do good actions I will give them good life hayatan tayyiba I give them I'll give them a good life and good life does not necessarily mean that you will be driving a aajkal kaun si gaadi batao aajkal to tesla chalegi hai na electric cars you know fuel prices are so high i don't think i should be given an example of a land cruiser right nobody wants a land cruiser these days so allah taala it does not necessarily mean that you'll be driving a very good car or living in a very good house it means a very good life a sukoon in life peace in life peace in the heart a good wife a loving wife a loving husband a loving ch- child an obedient child who is on the right track that is hayat tayyib tayyiba that's a goodly life okay. that there is sukoon in the heart ek sakinat within a person might be living in a hut but he is very content right that's a good life but everybody loves him they they care for him they think about him they make dua for him right 
they are people who 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 love love them that's a good life so allah taala does give people a, if if they are they are righteous people and allah subhanahu wa taala also says that if people do bad actions then it is also a possibility that allah subhanahu wa taala will punish them in this dunya also right that's 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 part of adl justice but then another uh, way of looking at him being just being ad al adl is that allah subhanahu wa taala has created everything justly everything is so perfect look at our own beings how perfect is a human being how perfect eyes could not have been anywhere else but here eyes had to be two people who lose their eyesight so for example for you close one eye and try to do things everything becomes one dimensional <laughs> unless and until we have that third dimension we cannot operate properly i don't even know how how deep is this if i close one of my eyes so we it had to be two it had to be here right the lips have to, had to be here the nose had to be here such a just formation of a human being and every makhluk actually right all of these when we smile there's so many muscles that come into play when we smile they all had they were so justly placed that if any of those muscles were not there we could not have we could not have been able to smile right the fact that you know we can open our eyelids some people start losing the muscles that hold their eyelids and their eyelids droop right there's subhanallah they're not only here they go come all the way from here and you know one of the people one of the doctors was telling me that these muscles that are along the neck what an important role it they have to play to to to, to control our eyelids and also Uh, you know there are so many nerves that go from here to the brain they help in br- achieving focus and what not so everything that we have we, i don't want to get into this topic but there every single thing that we have the acids that are produced in the in the stomach and all the other secretions that come in the gall gallbladder and the liver and this and that whatever they are so perfect and what is diabetes diabetes is a disease where the blood the sugar level of the blood becomes disbalanced and people have diseases the people who do not have diabetes only we need honestly we need to thank allah taala so much for everything actually but subhanallah the fact that we do not have that imbalance in our sugar levels in the in the blood or fever, our 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 temperature right what is that is 38.6 celsius 98.98.6 cell for night right 98.6.4 degrees rise in the temperature it becomes 99 and people cannot operate properly such a just balance of temperature of a human being itne kamzor hai hum log aur in subhan allah small little change here and there and we don't feel right we don't feel right it is created in such a just formation our bodies it ek cheez hai the way that our the planet earth is placed in the soul in our solar system right the fact that it is x number of kilometers away from the sun is so justly placed if it had been a little away or closer there would have it could have been very hot or very cold and we could not have survived and you can go on and on and on this is the adl this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's adl of the of 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 creating things in the whole universe so he's he's, he's al adl in that regard as well so he's al hakam and he is al adl so let's let's think about the rulings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives my dear friends that he is the just ruler he is the best judge right whatever he does is the best for people we need, we should not doubt any of the judgments that he makes 
all what happens in our life is because of a reason. There is a reason behind that. Everything is good for us. Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith which is in Sahih Muslim that Ajabali Amrit Mu'min. That strange is the affair of a believer. That all of his affairs are good for him. All of his affairs. Har but this is not for anybody except for a believer. He must believe in order to have his affairs, the best affairs. Because you cannot understand unless and until you believe. Everybody else will criticize. Everybody else will start thinking something else. But if you are a believer, then you know why things are happening. In Asaba tu sarra'u shakara. If ease comes to him, then he is grateful. Fakara khayr allahu, and that's good for him. Being grateful is good for all of us. Shukar karo ke amare apne liye acha hai. If we are grateful, that's good for me. Wa in asaba tu darra'u sabara. And if hardship comes to him, then he is patient. Fakana khair Allah. And that's good for him. Doi chiz ho sakti na. One out of two things happen. Either we lose a blessing or we get a blessing. Getting a blessing is ease. Losing a blessing is difficulty. If we get a blessing, we are grateful. And that is good for us. And ma'az Allah, if we lose a blessing, we are patient. And that's, that's good for us. Sabar and shukar, Allah Ta'ala loves both. Allah Ta'ala loves sabirin, Allah Ta'ala loves shakirin. Everything that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does is for our own benefit, is, is, is good for us. The very famous hadith in uh, Sunan Tirmizi is narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He says that, Kuntu khalfa Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a yawman. That I was behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day, he was sitting right behind the Prophet on a ride. So the Prophet he said, Ya Ghulam, right? First, make everybody attentive if you have to tell him something. If I just pick up the mic and say, Oh, dinner is ready, let's eat. 90% of you will not listen. So what should be done? You know, Assalamu alaikum, be attentive please, listen, I have, a, I have an announcement to make. When everybody starts listening, then you tell them what's the important message. Ya Ghulam, oh young boy, oh young boy. He was attentive, he said, Inni uali muka kalimatin. I'm going to teach you a few words, a few things. Pele made him attentive. First he addressed him, then he said, you know, I'm going to teach you something. In other words, be attentive. Listen. They're important things. He said, Ihfaz, yahfazka. He said, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Or, you can also understand it that guard or protect the commands of Allah, the rulings of Allah, and Allah will protect you. All the rulings that Allah has given to you, protect them, be mindful of them, guard them, do not disobey them, accept them wholeheartedly, and Allah will protect you. Then he said, That guard the rulings of Allah, be mindful of Allah, and you will find Allah in front of you. Allah ko apne saamne paoge. Subhanallah. He said, Ida sa'alta fas'alillah. Whenever you have to ask, ask Allah. Kabhi sawal karna to Allah se karna. Bas. Wa zista'anta fasta'in billah. And if you have to seek help, seek help from Allah. And then he said, Ba'alam. No. Anna al-ummata la wajtama'at ala an yanfa'uka bi shay'in لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لك. Know that if everybody, the whole makhluk, if they all gather together to benefit you with something, they will not be able to benefit you except with that thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for you. 
وإن اجتبعوا على أن يدروك بشيء لم يدروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك and if they all gather together to harm you with something they will not be able to harm you except with that thing that Allah Ta'ala has already written for you رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفْ pens have been lifted and the papers have been dried تقدیر میں فیصلے ہو چکے things have been written for you Rulings have been made for you by Al-Hakam. Accept them. And don't worry about anything. This is Iman. Yeh Iman. Right? Allah Ta'ala has made rulings for us that were the best for us. And he's saying that things have been decided for you by Al-Hakam, by the best judge, by the most wise judge, by the judge who loves you so much, by the ruler who cares for you, who does not leave you alone, don't worry, just accept the rulings of Allah and make sure that you guard them, you protect them, you act upon them and you will find Allah with you, you will find Allah in front of you, He will guard you, He will protect you and don't worry about anything. Always ask Allah, always seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will and, and, and you will be in sukoon, you will be in peace. Right? If any good comes to you, know that it could not have been saved from you. And if any harm comes to you, know that it could not have been saved from you. But the anita, koi baat nahi. Takdeer mein, right? And ajaballi amr il mu'min. Strange is the state of the believer. Anna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. Every affair is good for you. Be patient or be grateful. تو اللہ کی حکموں کی میرے پیارے بھائیو ان کو ان کو ایکسپٹ کریں ہم سب لوگ بھی آل ایکسپٹ وٹ ایور اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ہیز ڈسائیڈ فار ایس دیر سو 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 مینی انسیڈنٹس دیٹ ہیو دیٹ ہیپنس ٹو آس ایکچولی اینڈ وی آر وی سم ٹائمز وی آر امیز دیٹ ہاؤ کم دس ہیپن آئی جسٹ ٹیل یو دس ون اسٹوری البدا ون نہایا دیر واز There was a Hakim in Misr, his name was Ahmad bin Tulun, Rahimullah. Uh, long story short, what happened was that there was a, uh, he used to, before that he became the Hakim of Misr, uh, he, uh, he, he used to live with Tulun, who was the who was one of the rulers of Turkey, and Tulun loved him very very much, and he made him his son. He said, "You are my son." That's why you know he was he was he, he became famous with the name of Ahmed bin Tulun. Anyway, once when he was with Tulun, so Tulun once he asked him to go to do something in the palace. So in the palace, he found that there was a there was a Adima, there was a. Uh, female servant of the palace and she was engaged in some uh, indecent immoral activity with one of the khuddam with one of the servants of the palace as well so he he looked at them he found them and that was absolutely gross uh, lack of uh, it was breaking the principles of the palace in gen generally speaking but especially in the palace that was really wrong so he decided So he thought, what should I do? So then he decided that, you know, let me just hide it. I will not tell it to the ruler. But the, this girl, he, he, she, she found him. She looked at him that he now know. So she thought that he will go and complain, it, complain to the king. And I will be dismissed or maybe I'll be punished. Maybe I'll put to jail or whatever. Or it could be that I get a death sentence. You never know, right? The kings can decide whatever. Ta'ziran. So she, what she did was, she said that let before that he tells the king, I will go to the king. She went to the king. And, achha, Tulun, uh, Ahmed bin Turun, he did not tell the king, as I said. So this girl, she went to the king and she said, you know what? Ahmed, he has been enga he, he's engaging me, he's inviting me to do immoral acts with me. So he got very upset. 
and Ahmad did not tell anything. So to one side his story, he, 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 he agreed and he, he loved him. But now he could not take this. He said, how come this is happening in my palace? So, but he, uh, he wasn't sure what to do because he really, he, he didn't want to punish him himself because otherwise people would have said that, you know, look at him, he's saying he's called, he loves him so much and now he's, he's punishing him. So he made a decision that he called him. He said, you know, go to Fala, ruler of another city, take this letter to him. This past is, take this letter down to him. In that letter he wrote that, you know, this, this person who is taking this letter, kill him and, t and send his head back to me. So he can blame, you know, Patani kya kiya snewa ja ke, what did he do there and he killed him. So he was going, he, he took the letter, he didn't read it, he took the letter. While he was going, so this girl, she called him. She said, Achha, to, to prove her, her claim, that Ahmad is really engaged with me. She said, you know, let me, let me converse with him so that people will look at us and that be a, a, a proof that he is trying to engage me. So she started talking to him and she said, where are you going? And he said, you know, King has sent me to flower ruler. So, um, uh, so she said, you know what? Uh, can you do something for me? Let's, 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 let's do it together. He said, no, king has asked me to go there. He said, don't worry. You know, there is another man who can take that letter to him. And he, she called the same man, the same khadim, who, was, who she was actually involved with. She said to him, why don't you take the letter of the king to the fala ruler? And he said, okay. So when he took, the, king, the other ruler took the letter, he beheaded him, took the head and sent it back. So when the king saw the head, he said, it's not Ahmad. It's what happened? He called Ahmad. And then the whole story got revealed. And then that female servant was also brought and she also admitted that, what, that he didn't do anything wrong. But the, after writing this incident, the, the, the thing that was to be proven was that at the end of the day, it's Allah Ta'ala's rulings. It's Allah Ta'ala's ahkam that come into play. People decide whatever. They can hota wo yu And as I said, there are many, many things that possibly happen to us as well, in our life. So, my dear we should all accept the rulings of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاللَّهُ يَحْكُمُ لَا مُعَقِّبَ لِحُكْمِهِ وَهُوَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ Then Allah ta'ala is the one who decides, and there is nobody who can put his orders behind. Allah ke hukum ko koi piche ne daal sakta. And he is the one who is the quick, who is quick in taking, who is quick in accountability. At one place, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Afaghira Allahi abtaghi hakaman." And are they taking anybody else other than Allah as the judge? And there are many, many ayat as as I start as, as I recited at the start. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fal hukmu lillahi al-aliyy al-kabir." The rulings are for Allah, who is the Most High and who is the greatest. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "In al-hukmu illa lillah." The rulings are only of Allah. Alayhi sallahu bi ahkam al-hakimin. Isn't Allah the ahkam al-hakimin? Is the it aren't his rules over and above all other rules? He, is he not the judge of the judges? He is, is he not the ruler of the rulers? Indeed, Prophet ﷺ said, this is end of Surah Tutin, that when you hear this, that or when you recite this, Allah Ta'ala says, Alayhi sallahu bi ahkam il hakimin, isn't Allah the ruler of the rulers? So what should we say? Huh? Bala wa inni kya hai? Kya hai Malana? Wa ana ala dhalika min al-shahideen. Bala wa ana ala dhalika min al-shahideen. Indeed, of course. Alayhi sallahu bi ahkam al-hakimeen. Bala, indeed, you are, ya Allah. And I am a witness to that. I'm a witness to that, ya Allah. I believe in that. I testify to that. That you are the you are the biggest ruler, you are the ruler of the rulers, you are the judge of the judges. 
Your rulings are on top and above of every other rule, Ya Allah. But we should also believe that in the heart. That everything that happens, my dear friends, happen for a reason. First thing first is rulings are the best rulings. Shariat are the best rulings. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in this law, which is called Shariat, it is for my benefit and your benefit. It's for our benefit. You know, we should not criticize as to why there is a, why there is a covering for women. Well, there is a reason. Of course, we can prove that logically, indeed. But even if somebody is not convinced or if somebody doesn't understand, it's the hukum of Allah. And Allah Ta'ala is ahkamul hakimi. You know, why, why is that that alcohol is haram? Because it's the hukum of Allah. Why is that that gambling is haram? Because it's the hukum of Allah. Why is this that the, the, the interest is haram? Because it is the hukum of Allah. You know, we can, we can prove that all of that. We can understand possibly most of them. Maybe a few of them we cannot understand now. Like we can understand more, most of them logically. But th the simplest answer is that it is the hukam of Allah. There are some people who come to me and they ask me that, you know, uh, oh, somebody is asking me about this, that what is the logical proof for that? At some in some circumstances, in some certain situations, we have to prove to them the logical proof. I understand that. And we should do that. Like in not all the time. If this is the same person who is coming again and again and again, same person, who is coming again to ask for another logical proof, you give them two or three, but then after two or three, you know, let's talk to them. Say so like, look my friend, let's talk about do we believe in Allah? Do we believe in the Prophet of Allah? The Messenger of Allah? The Messenger of Allah is the messenger of Allah is bringing a message from Allah. Do you believe in them or not? Let's talk about that. It looks like you are asking for proofs one, two, three. It looks like there is a doubt in Allah or the messenger of Allah or in the book of Allah. There is a bigger problem here. So let's try to, let's talk about that. And if you are convinced that these are the rulings of Allah, our Creator, and these are the rulings that are the Messenger of Allah has given to us, then that's it. Right? Then there is no doubt that there is a wisdom and there is a reason for all of these rulings. Khatam baat. But don't snub people away, by the way. As a, as a general advice, don't snub people away if they are asking questions, they are asking for logical proofs, because the time, in the, the time that we are living in, unfortunately, these are the times where shaitan has created a lot of doubts in the hearts of the people and we should know the answers and we should give people logical proofs as well. But then as I said, if the same person is coming again and again, let's talk about this deeper problem here. And let's talk about that problem. Once we solve that problem, then we know that these are the ahkam of Allah and Allah Ta'ala is the best of the judges and Allah Ta'ala is the best of the ruler. So, we should know that these ahkam are from Allah and they're the best akam and we should follow them. And anything that happens in our life, anything that happens in our life is the is something that's best for us. There's good in that thing. Right? If people lose their job, and that's from Allah. We should do istighfar. We should ask Allah for forgiveness. We should beg Allah for 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 a better job, for a newer job, for uh, expansion in our provision and our risk and everything. But let's not doubt. Let's not criticize. Let's not lose hope. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that in, in in the Quran, there are people when when some harm touches them, they become mayus. They yausun kafur. They become hopeless. They become ungrateful. And Allah Taala says, when I remove that difficulty from them, then they become arrogant. They forget Allah as, a, as if that difficulty had never touched them before. Read Quran. Allah Ta'ala is saying, don't do that. But then Allah Ta'ala, then Allah Ta'ala says that people who believe in Allah, who do righteous actions, they are not of this kind. They don't do that. They know everything is from Allah. The difficult times are from Allah and the easy times are from Allah. There are so many things that are happening in the world right now. They're happening with us. They're happening in the world. They're happening... You know, with Muslims and others, they're all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
let's get let's do istighfar and be content with whatever Allah Ta'ala designs and rules for us right? we are given certain rules we are to follow we are not to ask Allah why did you do that Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون Allah Ta'ala will not be asked about what did he do Allah said, you will be asked what did you do but whom you saw, they will be asked what did you do you did what if people did not do what they were supposed to do then that means that there is a doubt in Allah there was a lack of iman and the last thing تَخَلَّقُ بِأَخْلَاقِ اللَّهِ we should adorn ourselves with the attributes of Allah if Allah Ta'ala is Al-Hakam, He is the ruler or He is the best ruler, we should also rule in the best of the ways. By the way, if somebody is given the authority to be, is given some authority, SubhanAllah, He is in such a difficult position. SubhanAllah. Anybody who is given any authority he is in such a difficult position. Because now it is His job to rule in the best of the ways, to authorize things in the best of the ways. Oh my God. Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is made a qadi faqadubiha bi ghayri sakin. He is slaughtered without a knife. And sometimes you think, honestly, there are some very difficult cases that come to the court. Right? And I sometimes think that what if I was a judge? What would I have I done to this? There's some cases that are, that there are so, so many emotions tied to that. And there is, you know, you're fighting between the intellect and the emotions. And emotions are really high. Right? If you decide based on the emotions, you will make a different decision. And if you make a decision based on the intellect, then you will make a different decision. And of course, emotions have to play a part. You cannot just ignore it. They are human beings. Subhanallah. I think at times, Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Really, he has been slaughtered without a knife. He is in such a difficult position. What will he do? Kya kare wo? Subhanallah. And, you know, there are many, many people in our history who refused to be a judge. Imam Abu Hanifa, he was offered to be a judge. He refused. He said, no, I can't. And the ruler of that time, he forced him. He said, I can't. He put him to jail. Why did you, why did you not listen to me? I said, I can't be a judge. I don't want to be a judge. He wanted him to be a judge of the Supreme Court. He said, I can't. I can't do it. How difficult it is. The said, he was a judge. And he had to be a judge. There was no choice for him. And he said, you know, people come to me with different cases, with different situations. And he said, some one of you at times is more, what do you say? Is more eloquent in putting his case, right? And of course, there are two people, right? One is very eloquent, he's putting his proofs and all of that. And the other person, Bichara, he can't speak properly. So the judge thinks that his proofs are better than his and he can make a decision in his favor because he said, you know, it may be that one of you is more eloquent and it is a possibility that, that listening to people's uh, arguments, I may give a ruling in his favor, why he was wrong? Because I am a human being. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. Why he is not coming for such judgments, being a, being a hakam, being a judge. He said, but if you know that you are wrong in your claim and you are just being eloquent and you get a judgment in your favor, you are taking the peace of the hellfire with you. You are taking the peace of the hellfire with you. Sometimes I think that looks like nobody has read any Quran, any Hadith. And look at what's happening in, at least in the courts in our country. Back home. Subhanallah. Like that, kisi ne Quran Hadith padi nahi. Pata hi nahi hai ki there is an akhirat. People don't even realize and understand that. There is a day of judgment. People go and they, 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 they either they are uh, being unjust, they are zalim, they snatch people's properties and do not give inheritance to people and what not. 
and, and then they file wrong cases and then they get wrong judgments because they bribe people and all of that. Where is Akhirat? Akhirat is not here. It's not hellfire, it looks like, for, for these people. Right? What about cover? The grave? What about dunya? People sometimes, if Allah Ta'ala's adal come into play, what if they are punished in dunya? Oh my God! Kya banega? So if we are, we get any authority, we have to make sure that we also make the rulings in the best of the best, even if it's against some people who are very close to us. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, you have to be, you have to, if you are, if you know something uh, that you have to be a witness for, then you give witness against just anybody. Be it your own parents. Be it your own children. Be it your own family. You have to. Because that's your responsibility. That you have to be, you have to give the ruling in, in the best of the ways. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the rulings in the best of the ways. And also we have to be ad adil. We have to be just. And there are many, many, many ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to be just. Aidilu huwa aqrabu taqwa Be just. That is closer to taqwa. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal maghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaru Allah Ta'ala orders Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl to be just and to be best wal ihsan wa idha hakamtum bayna al-nasi an tahkumu bil adl Allah Ta'ala says when you have to make a decision, إِذَا حَكَمْتُ when you have to give a ruling between people and تَحْكُمُ adl you give the ruling with justice. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said إِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعَدِلُوا فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ أو كما قال He said that it's a Sahih Muslim that fear Allah and be just amongst your children. I've seen people, subhanAllah, they, they distribute their properties in their lifetime, which is allowed. You can gift. You cannot write a wasiyah. You cannot write a will that after my death, fla 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 thing goes to fla fla of my children and relatives. Because after death, there is no control. Then Sharia takes control. And there is whatever anybody has written in their will that it be distributed to certain relatives of theirs that become null and void. It should be thrown into the trash can. Because Allah's orders now come into play. And you are in one lifetime, anybody can give anything to anybody that they want. But Prophet ﷺ is saying that, أَعْدِلُوا Be just with your children. There are people who will give, you know, say for example, if they're, they have three houses, right, and they have three boys and one, one girl, right, they will give one house each to their boys and not, not give anything to their girls. It's not justice. It's injustice. Technically, you know, okay, anybody can do that, but he is having a sin of not being just with his children. Prophet ﷺ said, You know, be just between your children, even if it's kissing. You know, if your, your three children kiss all of them, not just kiss two of them and put them in their laps and one child is very naughty and you don't want to kiss him. Don't do that. Be just. Even in kissing, patting, loving, caring, you know, hugging your children. Be just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. Be just with everybody. Be just with everybody. Harik saad in saaf karo. And this is something, subhanAllah. It's, 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 uh, you know, people will be asked about if they have done justice or not. And people who do, just, do justice, I mean, I said that, you know, it is very difficult to be the people of authority, but say if there is somebody who is just, there is a hadith, which is in Muslim of Imam Ahmad, the Prophet Sallallahu he said to the Sahaba, do you know that who will go under the throne of Allah, under the arch of Allah, uh, initially who will go who will be the first one to go under the arch of Allah so Sahaba said Allahu wa Rasuluhu A'lam 
We don't know. Allah and His Messenger know the best. So He said that these will be those people that when truth comes in front of them, then they accept it right away. Lower your gaze, lower gaze. No lies, no lies. Right? As soon as the thing comes to them, they act on it. And when they are asked, then they spend their wealth. And when they decide, they do justice, just like they do it for their own selves. When they make a decision, they make the decision with justice. They will be the first ones to go under the Arsh of Allah on the Day of Judgment. And they will get the shade of the Arsh of Allah, in other words. And there will be no shade but one shade. There is another hadith which is a very, this is in Sahih Muslim, it's a Sahih hadith. Prophet ﷺ said, and a person of authority, a person of authority, even if he has the authority over 10 people, thus long ka zimadar kyun nahi Could be a father who has a wife and nine children, he's 10 people. Anybody, he's a, he's a small company and he is the CEO of that company and there are 10 people working under him, say. He's a person of authority. Even if he has the authority over 10 people, he will be brought on the day of judgment in a state that there will be, uh, there will be a lock in his neck. And he will be, his justice will free him up from that chain, from that lock in his neck. Or his oppression to these people will destroy him. Just go authority mil gai, usko kali mein talk dala jayna. اور وہ تو اس کا اگر اس نے انصاف کیا تھا ان لوگوں کے ساتھ تو اس کو چھڑا دیا جائے گا چھوڑ دیا جائے گا اگر اس نے ان پہ ظلم یا انصاف نہیں کرے گا تو نہ انصاف ہی کرے گا وہ ظلم ہے تو اگر ظلم کیا ہوگا تو وہ اس کو بھلاک کر دے گا اللہ how difficult it is to be in a place of authority سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ That's why the Sahaba, they never used to present themselves to be in the place of authority. In fact, you know, according to the Hadith, a person who presents himself to be in authority, he's disqualified for that. Prophet Sallallahu said, who is given authority, then he will be held by Allah. پھر اللہ کی مدد اس کے ساتھ آگئے اور کسی کو تھوٹی دی جائے تو لیکن کوئی کلیم کرے then he's on his own and how difficult it is to be on your own if there is no help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my dears may Allah ta'ala allow us to understand the reality of things as they are اللہم ارین الحق حقا مرزقنا التباع ورزقنا التباع وَأَرِنَ الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَرْزُقْنَ اجْتِنَابًا May Allah allow us to see the right as right and may Allah Ta'ala allow us to follow that as well and may Allah allow us to see the wrong as wrong and also allow us to stay away from that. This is life. This is reality. This is the truth. And all what we are seeing it is sabbekara. This is all falsehood. This is batil. This is Deception. This is all deception. What we are seeing, what we are doing every day, right? Food, stomach, genitals, that's what we are after every day. And this is it. They are just mata of this dunya. Dalika mata al hayat dunya. Wallahu indahu husnul ma'a. Please understand life, my dear friends. Understand, you know, that uh, we are here to prepare for the next life. For that, we know who is our Creator. We need to know Him. We need to know what He does is for the best of His makhluk. Any makhluk. If people are going through some calamity, some sickness, Prophet ﷺ said, you know, they... they <laughs> They will come on the Day of Judgment in a way that there will be no sin on them. They will be pure. 
If somebody has been going through a lot of difficulties and calamities, they will come on the day of judgment in a way that they will be pure of all, all wrongs that they have done. Bilkul saaf sutri ho gai. La ba'as tahurun inshallah. That's what you say when somebody is sick, right? Don't worry. It will purify you of your wrongs. Fairogi. So anything that happens to us, we need to know that's a hukam from Allah, that's a ruling from Allah, that's a decision from Allah, there's good in that. Right? And we need to know Allah, we need to know His rulings, we need to know what His Messenger وسلم, has told us and we need to take all of that in our life and act upon it and that's good for us. That's the best for us. And there's good in this dunya and there's good in the akhirat, inshallah. Let's get out of our, or our from our decept, deceptive lives. You know, in from our you just hamsa ko chahiye, mai bhi niklu, aap bhi nikle. And let's all do tawba from the wrongs that we have done in our life. Sab log tawba kar le. Un sab gunahon se jo humne kiya. Let's uh, renew our tawba, let's renew our iman in Allah and all that we believe in. So let's all recite these kalimat with the niyat of tawba and with the niyat of tajdeed, of renewal of iman. Sare log is in kalimat ko perle, iman ki tajdeed ki niyat se, tawba ki niyat se, and if there's anybody who wants to make an extra niyat of bait of tawba, they can also make an extra niyat as well. Some log sache dil se, khlaase dil ke saa, maybe aap bhi, hum sab log isko in kalimat ko perle, kahe bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illa Allah. محمد الرسول الله آمنت بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره من الله تعالى والبعث بعد الموت آمنت بالله كما هو بأسمائه وصفاته وقبلت جميعا أحكامه قرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين May Allah accept our tawbah. Please, my dear friends, take a namaz, namazon pe minat kare. Let's all work on our prayers. Namaz, inna salata tanha anil fahsha iwal munkar. Prayer is an amazing thing, an amazing phenomena. Namaz ko asil me samjhe nahi hai. We have not understood what prayer is in reality. Isko namaz ki hakikat mil jaya na, whoever gets the reality of prayer, he... He starts understanding life in a very different way. Just by getting our prayers right. Zindagi badal jati hai. Soch badal jati hai. Sir. Namaz thi kardi se. Hum log namaz aise jaldi 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 padhte hai. You know, we don't give any time to our prayers. Unfortunately. Toh thodi namaz ke liye vakt nikala kare. Right? I understand, you know, Zohar maybe, you know, you're in work. Don't have enough time. Maybe. But maybe you do. Right? Maybe there is an hour break, say for example, a one hour break for prayers and lunch. <laughs> right? So give at least 30 minutes to prayer and 30 minutes to lunch. If not more to prayers. Now ask If you have less time, understand, you know, uh, it, it might be hard. Like in other prayers which are not during the work times. Fajr. Fajr me to. Fajr is a zabardast prayer, right? Subhanallah, what kya me loves is tamal ko raskir. Fajr is an amazing prayer. Ma Qur'an al-Fajr, inna Qur'an al-Fajr ikana mashhooda. Allahu Akbar. The angels come, they come down to listen to the Qur'an that is recited in Fajr. Parmar hoti hai farishto ki Fajr ke wakt masjid mein. They come down, they're there, they're present there. Just being in the company of the angels. Right? Yeah. SubhanAllah, they're praying with us, they're listening to the Quran of the Imam. You know, that should be, you know, that should be the highlight of our day. Fajr prayer. Ideally, maybe some tahajjud before that as well. Abdul Namad, din chote hote, shuru ho gaye It's easier to pray tahajjud. 
those who were praying fajr with jamaat a month ago kitne baje ho rahi thi fajr ek sai ha four o'clock was jamaat right approximately hai na aise hi tha chale approximately four o'clock ab kyun nahi why can't if you were getting up at four o'clock jamaat a month ago why cannot we get up at four o'clock today we have 25 minutes to pray tahajjud now same time wohi waqt hai to kyun nahi pad sakte tahajjud main unki baat kar raha hu jo jamaat mein fajr padte the ek mahina pehle bhi iska matlab uth sakte hai na that means we can get up why are being lazy and getting up half an hour later now so that means we can get up so let's get up at 4 o'clock ish and just pray two rakats like in those two rakats you know will be one of the very famous uh, grammarians bahut unne kaam kiya nahaf pe adab pe arbi adab pe bahut bade mere naam yaad nahi aa raha mai ghazari rahe allah taala has written that in his ahya uh, ulum ad-din and also in ayyuh uh, al-walad he said that somebody saw him in his somebody saw him in his dream after that he passed away and he said what happened he said i'm forgiven allah allah taala forgave me it's like of course you were such an amazing man you did so much khidmat to uh, to the arabic language which is the language of quran he said no you know all of those works that i did you know that will all gone to waste wo to ud gaye sare ke sare he said what saved me but two little rukayat two little rakat that i used to pray at the hajj time this year उन्होंने बचा लिया मुझे छोटी छोटी रक्त सो रखा उसे सो रही क्लास कैसा है अच्छी डील है ना एंड देन रेज हैंड बैग अल्लाह हल मिन साइल और there is an announcement being made and anybody asking anybody begging so that he be given anybody seeking forgiveness so that he be forgiven वो सब तो सिवाय लग रही होती है थोड़ी सी हिम्मत कर लें राइट एंड देन प्रे फजर वि जमात एंड दैट शुड बी द बेस्ट प्रेयर ऑफ द डे देन सिट फॉर सम टाइम डू सम जिक्र ऑफ अल्लाह इस्तफार दुरूद ऑन द प्रोफेस एट सम फोकस्ड टाइम विद अल्लाह इट इज कॉल मुराकबा थोड़ा आंखें बंद करके अल्लाह से लो लगा के बैठ जाए बस Allah's rahmat is coming in my heart as if my heart is saying Allah 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 thoda waqt thoda nikala kare bhai yo fajr ke baad to zarur fajr should be you know kids are sleeping wife is sleeping no ande no bread no dahi no doodh right nothing kuch bhi nahi hoga us waqt kya khayal hai inshaallah Inshallah, please focus on our prayers and make sure that we are not we are not doing anything against the will of Allah, against the rules of Allah, the rules of Al-Hakam. We are not doing anything wrong against that. Inshallah, learn that and execute that in your life. फिर देखना कैसे ज़िंदगी बदलती है इंशाअल्लाह. ख़ैर होगी. इंशाअल्लाह. वाख़रु दावाना. अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह. वाख़रु. अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह. रब्बिल अलीमीन. अल्लाहु सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम. सईदना मुहम्मद. وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم جز الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين يا رب الرحمين please accept this gathering from all of us يا الله all any good that i was able to say يا الله it was from your توفيق يا الله and anything wrong that i said slip of the tongue lack of ikhlas ya allah lack of the choice of words ya allah please it's it's my wrong it's wrong from my side ya allah please forgive me for that but i beg you we beg you ya allah that you accept it from all of us ya arhamar rahim 
Ya Allah, please put Iman and Yaqeen in our hearts, Ya Allah. Give us the sweetness of Iman, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please give us the sweetness of Iman. Ya Allah, please give us the sweetness of Iman. Ya Allah, ya Allah please give us our, our depth in our prayers, depth in our ruku, depth in our sujood, depth in our duas. Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, please don't leave us alone, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, shaitan is after us. Ya Allah, our own nafs is after us. There are people in the, there's shayateen in the form of people who are around us, who are trying to distract us. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you please be with us at all times and protect us, Ya Allah, protect our iman. Ya Allah, protect us in every shape and form, Ya Allah, and and protect us from all these shayateen, Ya Allah, and our own nafs. Ya Allah, we are in need of dunya and akhirat. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Ya Allah, please give us, Ya Allah, risk that is, that is vast risk and, and full of barakat, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, please. Ya Allah, if there is anybody who is in debts, Ya Allah, please. Make it easy for them to let go of their debts, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, anybody who is in any sort of difficulty, Ya Allah, from any perspective, from dunyavi or ukhari perspective, Ya Allah, please make it easy for them, Ya Allah. Take them out of those difficulties, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Allah, please decide best for us, Ya Allah, for this dunya and akhirat both. Ya Allah, have mercy on our parents. Rabbirham huma kama rabbayani sagheera. Ya Allah, those who have passed away from our parents, our relatives, or from mu'mineen, mu'minat, muslimin, muslimat, Ya Allah, please, please forgive them all and raise their ranks, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhriyatina qurrata a'yun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Ya Allah, make our wives and Ya Allah, the husbands of our, of all the sisters and our children, Ya Allah, coolness of our eyes. Ya Allah, make us coolness of the eyes of our spouses, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, please protect all of our generations to come in these times of fitna, Ya Allah, we beg you that you protect us from all fitnas, the zahiri fitnas, the batani fitnas, and also, Ya Allah, fitna of Dajjal as well, Ya Rahman. Ya Allah, please protect all those who are serving your deen in any shape or form, Ya Allah. Please join their hearts together, Ya Allah. Please remove all hatred, animosity, jealousy, arrogance, or any other ill feelings in our, from our hearts, Ya Allah, for, for each other, Ya Allah. Protect our elders, our teachers, our mashayikh. Ya Allah, and give them, Ya Allah, reward from our side for teaching us all what we know. Ya Allah, please give reward to our aslaf, our righteous predecessors, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please protect all three of our harams. Allow us to go there again and again, visit there again and again, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please do not close the doors of haram ayin from us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please protect the whole Ummah, Ya Allah. Protect all, Ya Allah, all, all, where, wherever Muslims live, Ya Allah. Protect them all, Ya Allah. Protect the Muslim countries, protect this country, protect this city, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we thank you for the blessing of Aman and protection, Ya Allah, and peace. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, please continue to increase our blessings on us, Ya Allah. And do not take them away, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, all those who have asked for du'as, give them all what they're in need of. Please, Ya Allah, all those who are in difficult states, take them out of their difficult states. Ya Allah, people who are sick, please give them perfect cure and speedy recovery, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, people who are giving exams, please make it easy for them. Ya Allah, just recently, Ya Allah, you took back, Ya Allah, one of the babies of our, our sisters and our brother. Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, we all know how difficult it was for them. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, please, we beg you. Ya Allah, because of their patience, give them, Ya Allah, reward according to your status, Ya Allah, and give them the house in paradise. Ya Allah, give them Baitul Hamd in paradise, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, and give them patience, Ya Allah, and please do never put them into any difficulty ever again in their life. And Ya Allah, give them the best Ya Allah, compensation for it in this dunya and akhirat, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimi. And Ya Allah, that, that baby of theirs will intercede for their parents. But Ya Allah, the fact that we are making dua for them, 
Ya Allah, please also give permission to that baby to intercede for us as well on that day, Ya Allah. When no intercession will be accepted, except those who you allow, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please allow us to prepare for our meeting with you. And wherever the time will come, we beg you that you please take us in the state, in the best of the states, states of Iman and take us back with, back with ease, with kalima on our tongue and good news and glad news, glad tidings from your side. Then your angels will be saying, La takhafu wa la tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannah. Ya Rahman Rahim, please make the questions of the graves easy for us. Make them the gardens of paradise. Allah, make the day of judgment the easiest day of our lives. Give us your shade when there will be no other shade. Give us the water from your the, from the hands of your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give us all his intercession, his shifaat. And Ya Allah, gather us all in Jannat al those under his feet. Just out of your mercy, Ya Allah. Just out of your mercy. Just out of your mercy, Ya Allah. And grant us all your, your everlasting pleasure, Ya Allah. And your, your sight without any barrier as well, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please accept all of our du'as that we have. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Sallallahu ala nabiyyil kareem. Alhamdulillah.